Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Geminot, Regional Vice President of Sales here at Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions. Uh, thank you for joining us today as we do a deep dive into our bank statement program. Uh, we're going to get started here. I'll introduce our two subject matter experts, and we're going to get started here in about a minute to a minute and a half. We'll let everyone log in. Hope everyone's having a great day and a great April. Um, I'm actually playing an away game, so usually, if anyone's usually on here, I usually have an Angel Oak uh, logo behind me, so uh, playing an away game, so uh, visiting family here in Florida. So uh, give it another minute or so. Hey, just give everyone a heads up. Next month, I think it's the May 4th, we're going to do a uh, debt service coverage ratio um, on May 4th and the 11th. We're going to do how to find these borrowers. And then uh, on the 18th, we're going to do a deep dive back into bank statements. This is being recorded. Everything we're gonna to do today is covered on our website. This is not a PowerPoint presentation. Everything's run from our website. So uh, <clears throat> we'll get started here in about another 30 seconds. A lot of people still logging in. Give it another 15, still people logging in. All right, let's get started here. My name is John Geminot, Regional Vice President of Sales here at Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions. Uh, today, uh, we have two subject matter experts with us. Uh, Leslie Rudd, Leslie, please introduce yourself. Thank you, John. Leslie Rudd, uh, been with Angel Oak seven years now, probably 20 plus years experience in a business. So uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty much a subject matter when it comes to non-QM. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to uh, get on, maybe help uh, educate folks a little bit more on on, on the bank statement program and, and all the nuances that go into it. Yeah, great. And Javi Naranjo, please introduce yourself too, Javi. Hey, Sean. Hey, I'm Javi Naranjo. I've uh, been at Angel Oak for about two years. Um, I mean, I eat, sleep, breathe non-QM. So I also know a little bit about the, the non-QM world and the bank statement program that we're about to talk about. Yeah, so usually, you know, um, again, this is being recorded uh it's, this is very you know participation driven so we've got a question box here we'll try to get to all your questions if we don't get to all your questions today we will have your account executive reach out to you regarding your specific scenario um but again this is being recorded we will get a recording of this out to everyone that registered by end of day tomorrow so uh again we're going to do a deep dive into hopefully by the end of this call all of you participated here today can be just subject matter experts just like Javi and Leslie. So uh, before we dive into some highlights of our bank statement program, we're gonna launch a poll here. And the poll is, who has originated, here we go, poll, okay. Sorry guys. Okay, who has originated a bank statement uh, uh, loan in the last 12 months? And while you guys are responding to this poll question, just wanna throw out some statistics. In 2020, new business applications grew by 24.7% over 2019. It's the largest increase in over 10 years. And in 2021, new business applications grew by 22% over 2020. That was the second largest increase. So this is the largest segment of the, of, of, of the workforce right now. There's more self-employed bars than there are VA bars. So the opportunity is huge. And the answers, 80% of you have not originated a, a, a bank statement loan in the wow. last 12 months. So huge, huge opportunity. And hopefully that's why you're all on this call today. So Javi, I'm gonna try to navigate our website here, which is really easy to use. It's just a little harder for me today playing your way game. So uh, just a little bit more. All right. Javi's going to cover our business bank statement elite program. So Javi, take it away, please. Yeah, sure thing. So um, kind of to introduce um, everybody since, I mean, 79% haven't worked the bank statement loan. Um, I'll introduce it a little bit. Um, our bank statement program is for self-employed borrowers, um, you know, that usually write off basically all their income on their tax returns. And now they need a means to qualify because essentially Fannie and Freddie aren't going to take those tax, re tax returns for the house that the borrowers want. So what we'll do is we'll 
use their bank statements to qualify them, and we're going to get that income straight from bank statements looking at their deposits only. Um, our bank statement elite is kind of our uh, child of our bank statement program. It's a newer program, um, and what it is, it's basically um, our bank statement program, but with generally better pricing. And what we'll do is we'll qualify the borrower um, off of their business bank statements only. So this isn't for personal bank statements, for 12 or 24 months of business bank statements only. And it's meant for owner occupied or second homes, and we could do purchase, rate and term, or cash out uh, on this program and even delay financing. Um, it goes up to 90% LTV as you see there on the left and down to credit scores of 660. And if you want a 660, it goes to 80% LTV, just a little nugget there. Um, so uh, one of the main requirements, like I said, they do need to be self-employed. We require two years of being self-employed and the borrowers need to own as little as 50% of the business in order to qualify. Anything less, we can use their personal statements and Leslie's gonna touch up on that in our regular bank statement program, but 50% for the business bank statement elite. Um, now, like I said, it is generally better priced and kind of like Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, with great pricing comes great credit history. We need, we need good, better credit history than a regular bank statement program. Uh, credit events, they generally need to have at least 48 months of seasoning across the board. And then um, for collections, judgments, things like that, you're going to see 24 months seasoning. Um, no 60-day late in the past 12 months. Um, and generally, guidelines like that are going to make the difference between elite and the regular business and the regular bank statement program. Yeah, thanks, Avi. You know, we'll get into these questions. So, Leslie, we're going to have you cover, you know, our our bank statement uh, program here, and and really just point out the main differences between our regular bank statement program and then our bank statement elite, please. Thanks, Les. Sure. So uh, the, the, our, our standard bank statement program, which is one we've had for quite a few years now, um, it, although we still do want good credit quality, um, it isn't as stringent uh, as the elite. So where Javier touched on, you know, credit events, uh, bankruptcies and so forth, uh, you know, four years or more, uh, we're okay with just uh, two years out of a foreclosure or credit event such as bankruptcy, uh, you know, foreclosure, bankruptcy, even lieu and so forth. So a little more flexibility there. Uh, and just like Elito, uh, still requires two years self-employment. Uh, again, all our rates are 30 year fixed. Uh, we do not offer any arms. Um, and uh, a, a little bit, a little difference, if, if you can scroll down up just yep, a tad. Sure. On the okay, so where bank statements for business bank statements, as Javi said, same thing. You must be at least 50% owner. When you're talking about personal bank statements, you have to be only at least 25% owner of the business. Um, and uh, something else to touch on is what we, you know, you see there are the expense ratios. So what's going to happen is when you send this loan to us, we're going to send this to our bank statement review team. They're going to calculate the income for us, right? Um, then while they're calculating the income, uh, we will send you a business questionnaire, which we'll show you later on when we get deeper into this program. Uh, and you're going to have your borrower fill that out. Now, depending on the type of business that they run, we are then going to hit them with an expense ratio uh, factor, depending on the way they, they run their business. Um, personal bank statements, if the borrower uses personal bank statements solely for his business, he runs his business through his personal bank statements, we will have to apply an expense factor just as we would to a, uh, a business bank statement. However, if the borrower um, does have a separate business checking account, but for some reason we're using a personal account, and there are some times where we're going to have to go with a personal versus a business for various factors. Um, in that case, since the borrower does have a separate business checking account, and logic is that he's going to run, he or she's going to run all their expenses through that business checking account, uh, we'll be able to give you 100% credit uh, of all qualifying deposits into the personal. We're not going to whack you twice uh, on the personal if you have a separate business checking account. Um, mm -hmm. This one uh, on on the standard bank statement, uh, we also allow investment, whereas in the elite, it does not. Uh, on, our, on our standard bank statement, 
primary, second home, and investment properties. And investment properties can go up to uh, second homes and investment properties can go up to 85 LTV. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty good statement right there, Leslie. You can go up to 85% one loan, no MI, right? So that's a that's a great thing. Um, and we're going to get to your questions. I do want to make sure everyone who is on this call knows this is going to be recorded. Everything we are doing is from our website, so there's no PowerPoint to distribute, but we will get this recorded out to you before end of day tomorrow. If we don't get to a lot of your great questions, we will have your account executive reach out to you. So Javi, and again, we're, we're going to get to a pricing engine. We're, and, and then lastly, we'll go to our market employee portal to show you know, the 80% that are on here, how to really find these, or the 100% that are on here, the 80% that haven't closed anything, how to find these borrowers too. So uh, Javi, tell us about the 1003, right? Tell us, you know, what you like to see, what you don't like to see, and you know, everything else in between. So yeah, so on a surface level, 1003, essentially it's no income. Everything is gonna be like normal, but no income. But to kind of go into a little bit of specifics, um, the section, the first section, you know, it asks for your borrower's information, and that's really something you gotta look for. Um, you're gonna fill it out in detail, everything in detail, give us the current address, name, social, birthday, um, all that info, um, and the employment section, make sure you fill that out correctly. Um, so you got to put their company name, whether they own it or not, is very important. So there's going to be an area asking for self-employed. Um, make sure you're checking that off and marking whether or not they own 125% uh, of their business or less or more. Or more. Um, but like I said, in that same section, we're going to keep that income blank. The reasoning is, is that we're going to be calculating that income for you. So you don't need to disclose what their income is on tax returns, because remember, we don't look at that. What we look at is the bank statements, and we're going to put the income there. Yeah, and 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 as you uh, Leslie mentioned earlier, and as you mentioned, we're calculating that income for you up front. We're we're doing that. We are doing it at that prequel stage. We're not doing it, you know, after. So I'm going to put out my public service announcement as I always do. If you know you are going to meet with a self-employed borrower, why not at that time get their tax returns? and get their bank statements because Leslie knows this, Javi knows this, all of our great account executives across the country know this. We're, we're gonna calculate that income for you. So get those bank statements up front and don't wait until you finally get their tax returns and realize they don't qualify for the house they were shopping for, which by the way, we've seen it three, four, five times, increase in purchasing power using bank statements versus tax returns. And, and who doesn't want that? We're all on the same pay plan, right? commission driven yeah. so uh, <laughs> go ahead Avi were you going to say something there yeah I actually was on the uh 1003 um and I just wanted to input that it's very important you guys fill it out correctly um you know there's a one of the underwriters here she says the 1003 says a story um it says the borrower story and everything that she needs to know about the borrower is going to be on that 1003 in the credit report so anything that's not on that credit report she needs to derive it from the 1003 and so when we're presenting this to our underwriters that 1003 needs to have all the information. So that means declarations need to be carefully reviewed and the REO section, we need to know if they own any other properties. I mean, in most cases, it helps us know whether or not they're gonna qualify and know what their DTI is more or less. Yeah, and Javi, you know, 30% of the loans we close here at Angel Oak don't meet our guidelines, right? And, and specifically what you're talking about, that 1003 is critical for us making those exceptions. So Leslie, I know we talked about seasoning on bankruptcies, foreclosures. What are we looking for as far as trade lines from borrowers, if you don't mind covering that from a credit sure. perspective? Right. And so basically almost like like you said about exceptions, but the rule is we want to see either three trade lines reporting some activity within the last 12 months or two trade lines uh, open for the last 24 months and activity in the last 12 months. Yeah. Okay, it's it's pretty simple. It's either three for 12 or two for 24. We want ideally we want to see activity, um, yeah. but again, like you mentioned, there are reasons to make exceptions. Um, now, if it's someone who's just brand new in the credit, uh, uh, brand new credit market, very little history, uh, very shallow credit then we're probably not gonna look to make an exception. But if you've got a borrower that's very well seasoned in, in the credit uh, bureau, 
been, you know, 10, 15, 20 years in, in the Bureau with lots of good past history, uh, not really any history of derogatories. Um, if we're short, maybe one one trade line, a good chance of, of getting an exception on that. But but the rule is three for 12, two for 24. Yeah, and the beautiful thing about that, Leslie, is, is, is you know, you're going to look at that up front. Basically, Leslie and Javi and all the account executives, they pre-underwrite these files, right? And, and as I mentioned, 30% of the deals we close don't meet our guidelines because if Leslie or Javi or anyone else is unsure about that, we do that at the pre-call stage. We're not wasting your time, your borrower's time. We're doing all this, the income calculation, the credit review, we're doing this all up front. And guess what? We'll use that calculation of income that we give you throughout the underwriting process. So. Yeah. How great is that? So I know we're going to get into some Q&A. Carlos is asking a question here. Les, we might have to look at our matrices here. You know, what LTV, what's this, I'm sorry, what's the credits, Carlos is asking, what's the credit score required for a 90% LTV? I'll take that one. Uh, 720. Yeah, 720, yeah. And, and guys, you know, Jose, there's always enhancements coming down the road. So as, as Javi and, and, and Leslie asked some questions, as we ask them questions, uh, you know, those are they're they're going to be looking at some of their matrices. Uh, uh, does bank statement usually require bank statements give calculating income via bank statements? So not sure I understand the question, Janice, but yeah, I think well, so I think what Janice is trying to ask, and I think Leslie, we asked we answered this already, but answer it again is we're going to use those bank statements to calculate that income. Let's talk about deposits. Maybe maybe that'll help Janice understand. You know, what are we looking for as far as deposits, Leslie? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, either either business or personal. Um, we really like to see uh, consistency. Consistency helps us um, a lot. If you have a a, a borrower uh, who has very inconsistent deposits, let's say four months worth of deposits and then the other months uh, nothing uh, or very very little that is you know th that's not something we're really going to be too much interested in uh we want to see kind of a, a a consistent flow throughout throughout the 12 or, or 24 months um i mean like i said there are some exceptions if if it's a seasonal business um i would prefer to get 24 months uh therefore we can show from one year to the next um and again with the business questionnaire that we're going to get to later and show you, uh, that's going to help us make that decision. Um, so if the guy's a, a lobster fisherman up in the Northeast somewhere, right? I'm sure there's lobster season and there's not lobster season, just like down here in Florida in uh, in stone crab season. So <laughs> if it's seasonal, it makes sense. That's okay. But if it's very consistent, uh, we'd rather not see that. We like consistency of deposits. You had to bring up the stone crabs, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Javi, so Javi, I know Leslie touched on the, the example of 12 and 24, but you, what are you going to ask all the time? Get the 24, right? Yeah, yeah. Usually, I tell you get the 24. It gives us more knowledge, and when we get that income at the end of the day, we'll look at what's what's the better income, the 12 or the 24. And it just, it, like he said, it gives us more knowledge of the bar. If it's a seasonal bar, we'll see if it's truly seasonal. You know the the in between months, they're getting all this income. We we can see that it's like I said, a story that you'll be able to tell from those bank statements. Yeah. And Leslie, Janice is asking here about you know we're doing bank statements. W would we ask for tax returns? And no, I maybe no. maybe I confused her by saying if you're going to get and, and Janice, let me clarify this. If you know you are going to get, or if you know you're a meeting with a self-employed borrower, get their tax returns and go down your traditional agency route but get us the bank statements so we can calculate income and then you can provide two options for your borrower versus just one so that's what i meant hopefully janice that clarifies that but leslie maybe answer are we are we asking for a 4506t or anything yeah no 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 4506 uh definitely do not send us any tax returns we don't see k1s Please make sure when you get to the loan process and you're uploading a loan for loan submission, please do not upload tax returns, K-1s, 4506s, anything that has any whiff of, of 
IRS, you know, declared income. We definitely don't want to see that. And Janice, thank you. Hopefully, I did clarify that for you. So thank you, Janice. Hey, Javi, Chris is asking, what are the turn times to get bank statements calculated? Great question, Chris. Thank you. So honestly, at this point, um, depending on our, our review team, I'm getting some bank statements back, same day calculation, but it can usually take from 24 to 48 hours, um, depending what the situation is. But um, if we're missing some uh, bank statements, if we're missing um, some information, um, it could take up to 48 hours to get those bank statements back in and we'll send you an email asking for those bank statements where you could directly upload it and go on a fast track process when you're missing that bank statement. Yeah, so hopefully Chris that uh, answers that question. So Leslie, when you when you when you get the calculation back, you know, uh, Lorazo is asking this. When you get that question back, how do you share that with your loan officer? That calculation. Sure. So um, I, I typically will will send them a screenshot of the income income calculation, or I can download a PDF and and share what the income is. Um, and uh, you know, from there, then obviously, when I do get that income. Uh, I'm going to finish the uh, the pre-approval process, plug plug that in as the income, and, and prepare our our pre-approval. So I want to expand on 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 the pre-approval process sure. and, and the whole process in general. So obviously you're going to send us a credit report and a 1003, bank statements. We get in review. We get the income back. Now that's the last piece of the puzzle. With that, we're going to go ahead and finish the pre-approval process for you and and issue you a a, a pre-approval uh, letter the way i explain it and try to the analogy i like to give is this is big think of us as your manual du because that's really what we're doing aren't you when, when you're going to run a, a a traditional agency loan you're just running du you're you're reissuing credit and it, you're reading whatever info you give it on 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 the 1003 uh, if you tell if you tell DU that the borrower makes ten thousand dollars, they can say, okay, you made ten thousand dollars and and spits out your DU. Uh, you're gonna have to prove it when you get a ton right here, but that's that's what you get. Same thing here, ten oh three credit. I got the income now. I'm issuing you a uh, an approved eligible pre pre approval letter. Um, it's really the same. It's just manual. Yeah. Yeah, and and if I could just say that that pre approval process is huge and it's something that really sets us apart here that um our aes we go in depth i mean if we try we basically try to to kill your deal because if we can kill it so can our underwriters we need to make sure that when you're going into underwriting you're not wasting your time and the borrower obviously has earnest money on the line they don't want to waste their time so we really look to try to see if this deal can go through our underwriters and um i really mean it when i say our, our aes are the best at looking at these files at the pre-approval stage to see if they can get through through underwriting. Yeah, and if I can piggyback on, on what Javi said and we said previously, the more complete the 1003, the better. Um, lots of times I look at the 1003 and I can tell I'm, I'm looking at half the story. Uh, yeah. I've seen enough 1003s that I can figure out the other half of the story, but because uh, again, you see, you see it all the time. So that's where we get back with, with the broker, with the LO and say, listen, I need a little more info here. Um, just fill in some gaps because we really do, like I've said, I mean, we we really do pre-underwrite uh, LOs, a lot of my LOs that, you know, if you speak to my LOs, I'm constantly grilling them. I'm looking at every angle on the deal because we want to make sure that it's, it's, a, it's a successful deal when we get it into underwriting and, you know, we're set up for a clear close. You know, one of our A's always uses this expression is like, we're like your confessional booth, right? At the prequel stage, right? You know, tell us everything. Tell us everything because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna structure that deal and the experience that Javi and Leslie and all the other AEs have, they know those second, third, fourth, fifth level questions to ask to peel it back. And and so we can tell you yes, and you can stand by that bar and trust that your referral source is going to feel confident working with you and us. So get back to some of the questions here. Lori asked a great question, Javi. If a borrower owns 50% of the company, is 50% expense factor to that? Kind of go through, give us, you know, how we look at a partial ownership and then how that expense factor is applied. Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, so essentially when we get that income back, our bank and review team is going to give us that income already calculated with the expense factor. Then your AE is going to go into that file and we're going to look if they own 50% of the business essentially they own 50% of that income so we only give them the 50% when we get that income back 
of course now we can use the business assets and it's again 50 percent of that business assets because they own 50 percent of the business depending if they're at 75 if they're at 65 will only give them the percentage of what they own in that income and then on top of that of course we will look at the expense factor and depending on the business we can always get that adjusted so so john's on this call not me john another john he ran a second home with an 800 credit score and actually <laughs> he mentioned that regular bank statements were priced better than business elite as long as that borrower meets the regular bank statement you know uh season and on foreclosure basis yeah go with the better pricing and just so everyone on this call knows is both javi leslie and all our account executives are going to put your borrower in the best priced program for you so again that's not anything that you have to do um i have so another great question here um oh nancy's asking javi can a self-employed borrower be combined with a w2 bar Oh, awesome question. Yeah. So um, we see it all the time. Sometimes the spouse is a W-2 borrower. As long as that spouse doesn't work for the same company that the, the self-employed borrower owns, we can totally use that W-2. Now, big uh, red flag is do not upload tax returns for that W-2 borrower. We're going to look at their pay stubs and we're going to look at their, um, their deposits and, and we're going to look at everything aside from the, the, the tax returns. But yes, we can allow a W-2 co-borrower on that deal as long as they don't own uh, work for the same company that the self-employed borrower owns. Yep. Thanks, Javi. Uh, Leslie, John's asking another great question here. What if someone has two separate businesses? Will we allow multiple bank accounts? Yes. If the borrower owns two separate businesses, we're okay with that. Um, the only caveat there is we're, we want to make sure that there's no commingling of funds between the two different businesses. So if we do see that there are transfers back and forth, um, then we will not allow that. We just got to pick up. We just got to pick one. Yeah, and I'm going to answer this question um, for Sandra because I don't want to put Leslie and or Javi on the spot about non -perm, uh, non perms for for bank statements. It Sandra, it is coming. Hopefully in a couple of weeks. I don't want Leslie or Javi, to feel that pressure, I'll take that pressure, hopefully in a couple of weeks. So Sandra, hold in there, uh, hang in there, I should say. Um, hopefully we answered that question. Uh, Ken's asking, oh, Ken, this is just for permanent finance and it's not construction to perm, it's just permanent financing. Um, <clears throat> okay, here's a question Leslie Bonnie's asking from a divorce decree. A one lump sum payment you mentioned. That's why I'm going back to you, Leslie. You talked about consistent deposits. We're really looking for income driven deposits, right? Right. Yeah. This is right. It's it's, it's business income. Uh, you know, a, a divorce settlement. That's not business income. Um, we want to to see. You know, it's an actual ongoing business, whether it be a corner candy store, a pizza shop, you know, a chiropractor. You know, that's yeah, yes, gotta be a business. Yeah, and 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 just want to make sure everyone knows this is being recorded. You know, if we don't get to a lot of these great questions, your account executive will get with you. Uh, you know, and this recording will be sent out before end of day tomorrow. So, and then uh, and we're going to get to our pricing engine that John used earlier. Uh, we're going to get to our how to submit a prequel to us, which Catherine's asking. Catherine. Um, we will pre-approve your borrower. We don't work with your borrower. Obviously, you're the licensed originator, but we, you get us the 1003 from the loan application, as we mentioned earlier, the credit report and the bank statements, and we will produce uh, a pre-qualification, as Leslie said, uh, to you, which is just as good as a DU or an LP. So uh, hopefully that answers that question. Um, yeah, so Reese, Javi, Reese is asking how, you know, the 1003 doesn't always show debt. Maybe tell, kind of this might be a tip and trick what you do when approving a, at the prequel level when you're looking at debt. Are you taking that from the credit report then if it's not on the 1003? Yeah, yeah. So we'll always go um, look at the combination of the 1003 and the uh, credit report. So we'll go off of your credit report, even in underwriting, um, barring any material changes to the credit report from time of obviously when you pulled and submission, 
um, we're going to want to we're going to go with your credit report. We're honor it. So at the pre-call stage, I'm going to go through all of the debts that the borrower has on that credit report. Um, but what the 1003 does have on there is what they're paying for rent or or their mortgage. It is on there in, in terms of taxes and insurance. All that information we need to calculate the true DTI. So that right. in underwriting, we don't have that issue of hey, we didn't calculate taxes and insurance or the rent payment or things like that. Um, well, rent wouldn't be in there, but um, the taxes and insurance, if they own another home, we do need to take that into account. Yeah. Hey. Can I get back on, on something yeah. real quick, Javi? Because um, then going back to, it seems like we keep harping on the 1003, but it is important. Uh, and since you did mention rent, so we're, we're always going to want to know your housing history um, and your current housing payment. Uh, and we need that because, you know, we want to make sure, you know, that there's no payment shock. Um, so it's, if they are renting, we ask that you please put what they're paying in rent. Many times it comes in blank. Uh, so we got to go back and say, hey, can you please tell us what they're paying in rent? Um, uh, if they're, if they're a current homeowner, obviously, you know, if, if it's not on there, I could probably get it off the credit report. Uh, but we do ask that you put the housing history there because it does help us. And, and again, it's one less time we had to go back and, and ask you for further clarification, which just takes more time. Yeah, so Javi, uh, what expense factor would you apply to a realtor? Nancy's asking that question, which is a great question, so. It's actually a great question, yeah. So realtors, um, if they don't obviously own the real estate brokerage, um, we give them, we could go down to, on the regular bank statement program, a 15% on the regular bank statement program. Elite, we go down to a minimum of 25%, um, but on regular banks, and 15% for a realtor, um, it makes sense. As you guys all know, your realtors, um, they drive to showings, they drive back, but a lot of the work nowadays is done at home from a computer and um, they speak to borrowers on the phone, so we can go down uh, there on the CPA letter. Yeah, so Wade, I'm going to answer this question, um, you know, about the service industry, bartenders, wait staff, you know, if they are W-2, we don't consider them a self-employed borrower. So now if they've got another gig somewhere where they're maybe, you know, maybe they're doing Uber, maybe they're doing, you know, a Lyft, you know, that we could, we could lend to that borrower. But uh, if they're getting a W-2, we don't consider that borrower self-employed. Uh, uh, Thank you. You know, Catherine, this is Catherine. Leslie, you know, who pulls the credit report? Catherine's asking that question. Uh, so kind of okay. go through that process well, with us, please, Les. So we're gonna so when we're evaluating the the deal, we're using your credit report. And I'm basing uh my decision off of your credit report. Um but as Javier alluded, um, when the loan gets submitted into underwriting, we will pull our own credit report. Um, and as Javier was mentioning, we will respect your credit score uh, as long as our pull does not show any material difference. Definition of material difference is either there was a recent, um, you know, another uh, credit, whether they got additional credit, bought a car, uh, and that caused it to go down, or there was a recent late that shows up on ours that didn't show up on yours. Uh, so those are two which, two examples of material uh, differences um, that could, well, which would then make your, your credit report, uh, unfortunately, uh, void. We'd have to go with ours. But if there is no difference, if there was no material difference, um, and our score happened to be lower, we will still respect your score and go with your score. Yeah, and Javi, how do we determine, you know, um, the question here, hold on, let me look back here. Um, Giovanni is asking, how do you determine, you know, how, what do we use to determine their, their, their what am I, I'm having a brain freeze here, uh, that determine their ownership? What are, what are the, some of the things we use to determine a self-employed borrower's ownership in the company? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Another great question. Yeah. So um, that same CPA um, that's going to be verifying their expenses if we go less than 50, um, that same CPA, we're always going to require that a CPA that are confirming their percentage of ownership. So they're always going to go to a CPA on a bank statement deal, um, whether it's 
their own CPA or if they do their own taxes, which we see a lot of times, they could go to any C verifiable CPA, tax preparer or accountant and get that letter confirming percentage of ownership. Um, all we need on that is for them to write their percentage on there, whether they own 50, 75, 100, we need it written down on a CPA letter confirming it. Leslie, is there a prepayment penalty on these loans? On investment loans, there are. So if it's yeah. an investment, uh, we, we, we do apply a, a prepayment penalty. Uh, we, uh, we apply, uh, we default it to a three-year prepay, uh, but there are pricing options uh, and, and buy down or buy out options. Right, but Ro Robert, we don't have a prepayment penalty on owner-occupied or second homes. Just want to make sure. Uh, uh, Javi, talk about cash out. We've got uh, Jacqueline asking about cash out. Are the guidelines different for cash out? You know, I I I, I will. I'll let you talk. Then I'll, I'll if, if you don't cover it, I'll cover it. So no worries. So yeah. So um, we allow uh, cash out after six months of seasoning of obviously owning that property. Um, and we could go up to 80% on the business bank statement elite, right? And then if they want to go regular bank statement here, um, we can go up to 85% on that on that cash out. No, okay? it's 80. Um, they'll need at least 700. Yeah, you were going to say? Javi, no, we switched that to, to 80. It's just 80%. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But, but, um, we did, we did allow it one time, but we did change it. And it's, it, we backed it up to 80. Sorry, sorry, Javi. All right, so that was a correction. So 80% um, with at least 700 FICO, um, and we can go um, down to 680 on cash outs with a uh, max LTV of 75%. Um, but yeah, many times you'll, especially nowadays, people are trying to recoup some cash. Um, after six months of owning that property, we can do that cash out. Um, but I'm not sure if you want me to touch up on uh, delayed financing there. No, but I but I think, you know, yeah, touch on delayed financing quickly there, please. Yeah. Yeah. So um, inside of those six months, um, many times uh, after a buyer buys a home, especially nowadays, people buy cash so they can secure that property or they use hard money. Um, we allow them to still recoup some of that cash um, in a kind of a hybrid of a purchase and a cash and a cash out. So what we'll do is that we'll qualify them off of purchase guidelines. We'll go off of the lesser of appraised value or purchase price. And what we'll do is that we'll go ahead and we'll um, give them some of that cash that they were wanting back. Yeah, and 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 regarding the cash out, which you know, especially here in in you know your sand states, you know your Florida, your Texas, your Arizona, you know we've seen really really great appreciation, and we're seeing cash outs become a larger percentage of our business. And, and, and guys, you can create your own refi boom right now. I mean, really, if you if you go out and, and work and find, and we're gonna show you how to find those self-employed borrowers, you know, they might not be ready to upgrade their house. Maybe they're in a super great rate, but they might wanna, they might wanna uh, cash out. So uh, think about that. And there was a question here about 1099, and I know we're about 20 minutes to the top of the hour. So let's talk about, I think I had, Hobby was going to cover some of the highlights. And Hobby, while we cover some of the highlights, let's talk about why you would use a 1099 even versus bank statements. So yeah, that's a great um great program. So um it kind of piggybacks off of the bank statement program in that it mirrors um the sense of no tax returns for self-employed borrowers that are obviously are 1099. Um that 1099 has to be from a single employer. Um, so if they have 1099s with multiple companies, um, they wouldn't qualify, but they could go um, bank statement. But that being said, if we're doing the 1099 program, usually you'll see this with a lot of realtors. Um, you can see it with some construction workers, commission-based workers, that um, there's not that much consistency in their deposits. Um, you'll have four or five months of straight deposits. They might have a month without, two months without, and then um, the rest of the five months, they have deposits again. What we'll do is we'll look at the 1099s with uh, year-to-date earnings on the bank statements, and we'll derive an income from that instead of the bank statements or the tax returns. So, hey, Les, what about, thank you, Javi, I appreciate that. Um, what about, you know, deposits from Zelle, Venmo, and, and stuff like that? That's fine. That's acceptable. Yeah. I, I know we're we're definitely at 20 minutes to the top of the hour. We want to show you, you know, everyone's a lot of great questions. We also have someone working behind the scene answering some questions too. So uh, let's uh, 
we covered 10.03. That's great. Now we got landscapers outside. Sorry about that, guys. I'll mute myself when. All right. Beautiful. Hey, Leslie, let's talk about our quick quote. You know, it's a great, easy to use yep. tool. Also found on our website. I'm going to go back to our homepage here. Yeah, show them where to find it. Yeah. You know, where we can get it from. So, um, so either here at the top or over here in the middle left. I'm going to mm -hmm. click on here and we'll get to our quick quote. Leslie, I'm going to give you a, a kind of a scenario to go through here. We're going to go to a $750,000 loan, right? Credit score 760, loan to value 70%. And it's pretty easy. It's already dynamically changing some of the fields. We're, because we're talking about bank statements, but these are all the programs we have available. We're putting 24 months business bank statements. And as mm -hmm. you can see, it's already changing. And as John alluded to earlier, the pricing might be different for elite versus bank statement or vice versa. So let's kind of cover yep. what we found here. Sure. So, so right. And obviously, de depending on the different loan parameters that you input, you obviously you'll get different pricing. And as John showed you, there are different programs, uh, the DSER and full doc and others that will also deliver pricing. So, so once, once she's input the parameters, um, you will get a stack. It will show you uh, all the available programs um, and, and pricing along with it. So this one pops up too. We have the Elite and we have the Bank Statement. In, in this particular one, the Elite is a little bit better priced. Uh, generally, Elite is better priced, but there are some situations. And again, it just depends a lot with, with we've gone to a, dy a dynamic daily pricing model. Um, and sometimes, you know, the elite may not be the, the best, but it usually is. So, um, and again, it will, here we'll break down the, the seasoning requirements. So obviously you see bankruptcy, the elite four, uh, four years, bank statement regulars 24 and same on housing. Uh, reserves for both is six. Um, and then uh, it'll give you whatever lot duration you had indicated up in, in the parameter. So with that being said, uh, you hit this blue button, it'll give you a price and stack. So go ahead and hit that. Uh, so you'll see at six point, and this is, again, we just, if you went with borrow paid. So 6.999 is at, is at par. If uh, you'll see it, you'll see it on the stack. If they do want to uh, buy down the rate a little bit, they can, and it will give you the pricing on that. So if they want to go to 6.75, you'll see it's priced at uh, 0.75 and it's going to cost them 5,600 bucks. So, or you can, if you want to go a little higher rate, you can actually get them lender credits. So if you're going to a situation where you're going to charge them borrow paid, and let's say you're going to charge them two points, but you price it at seven and a half, you can give them one point lender credit. So kind of offset the two points you're charging uh, with that lender credit. So that's also a tool that you can use. So anyways, that's the pricing stack. Once you've identified the price, go ahead and hit that blue select button and then pull up, right? So for the moment, ignore the Bismo file. That's this is something that we're developing for for the future where it would be more automated. So for right now, uh, just go ahead and hit that next blue button. Okay, now this is where you're going to put give us some more information. You're going to upload some documents. So again, you'll see there's a synopsis of what's already been identified, right? The program, the rate, and so forth. Okay, now we're going to identify the loan officer. So you look for number one. Let's see what is there somewhere there because I found it. Okay, then you're going to go ahead and fill out the rest of the info, your company, your, you know, your NMLS and so forth, your borrower and what state you're in. Okay, then we're going to see a couple different buckets that we're going to need you to drop in the documents. 1003, it must be PDF. Okay, we cannot accept any, any MISMO files or any zip files. So it will be a, a, a PDF 1003, drop it into that bucket. Credit report, the same thing. It's not a reissue model. I need the actual PDF uh, credit report. I don't need a 1008 if you have it, that's fine. It's not essential. Um, then we'll see the bucket for the bank statements. Uh, same thing, I cannot ex accept a zip. They must be individual PDFs, or if you're having just one long PDF, that is fine. Uh, what you're gonna find is as you're uploading or dragging them in, it's gonna seem like you you know, the bucket is not expanding, but it will. It will, it will accept uh, up, 20, up to 24 months bank statements, okay? So just drop them all in there. Then there's a business questionnaire. Now, this is something that will be important later on. I don't need it up front right now for your borrower, but this is something that you can print and send to your borrower. So this is what helps us determine 
the expense ratio that we may have to apply to the borrower. So depending on, you know, and also there he's going to give us percentage of ownership, but we still will require, like I've said, the actual account letter. But this tells us a little story about his business, how many employees he or she may have, uh, or if it's just, you know, someone like again, a realtor just working from home. So uh, this helps us later on uh, get that expense ratio. So that's something that while we're getting the income calculated for you, uh, we would like you to go to your borrower uh, and get this from, from them. Uh, so then we, when I do have the income back, uh, then I can feel comfortable in uh, applying uh, a certain expense ratio. So once, once that's done, uh, it really, you don't have to send me much documentation. If there's something you want me to see, you can go ahead and upload an additional documentation uh, and scroll down all the way to the bottom. Um, again, uh, the bankruptcy discharge event, that's not uh, essential. Uh, I'm going to get that off your credit report anyway, so you really don't have to worry about that. So once, once I have the required documents, then you can hit that blue submit button on the bottom right there. Uh, that will then come to me via secure server and we immediately send those bank statements to the bank statement review team. And as Javi was saying er, uh, earlier, if you get those to us kind of, you know, early in the day, I would say even early afternoon, uh, generally we're gonna get them back for you the same day. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's later on in the afternoon, I'd say anytime after three or four, it might bleed into the following morning. Um, and also, as Javi said, if for some reason um, you did not submit all the bank statements or what happens sometimes is um, borrower may have multiple uh, st statements and they might send you the wrong one. And then our review team picks it up and says, oops, we're missing one. You're going to get an email uh, asking us to or asking you to please upload the correct one. So that might throw a little bit of delay, but generally we're going to get it back the same day. Les, great job. You know, yeah, that's how you get us a prequel. And again, it's the, the the detail and the and the how our account executives jump into it is is second to none. And and the resources they have to make these decisions on your and your borrower's behalf are incredible. Uh, Leslie, Chris is asking, you know, what's our how quickly can you close a loan here at Age Loan? So that's a good question. Um, our turn times are typically two to three days in underwriting, sometimes a little quicker. Uh, actually, honestly, it's about two days, but I got to say two to three days. Um, so almost as fast as you give me the documents that we need. Um, you know, so there's no reason we can't close the loan well within 30 days. It's just a matter of how quickly uh, your borrower can get to the documents that we need uh, and you turn around and get us those documents. Um, so, yeah, it's about 30 days or better. Yeah, and when you know we can have your account executive reach out to you and go through your your two and a quarter LP lender pay comp uh, with you specifically regarding your specific scenario. So, <clears throat> um, so Javi, we've talked about a, a lot of stuff here. I know we've got about 12 minutes left. I, you know, we're giving you the the stage here for you know everyone wants to know how do we find these borrowers how do we market for these borrowers so uh let me now leslie do you need login credentials to run quick quote no absolutely and, not and the reason why i'm bringing oh. it up because to get to our marketing portal you have to have login credentials so let's uh hopefully this will pop up and not be let me make this a little smaller sorry to avoid this. Okay. Javi, why don't you pull some of this dead space while I'm trying to type? It? <laughs> no worries. Yeah. So um, as he logs in, um, just if you guys are needing credentials, go ahead and reach out um, and your AE will get you those credentials. Well, it, it might take some time to get them, um, but we'll go ahead and get that uh, ready for you. Um, I think Awesome is missing an O there. Um, oh, you are correct, sir. But um, yeah, this marketing portal, guys, if, you, if you're not using this marketing portal, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to get the word out about products you have. Um, I haven't met an LO yet that doesn't like our marketing portal. It's an <laughs> amazing tool. I mean, we have so many tools for you guys in that portal that if you're not using it, you truly are missing out. Um, so if you want, we can go ahead and dive right in there. Um, we, we can start with the presentations. Um, this is personally one of my favorite tools for you guys to use. Um, our realtor presentations are second to none. I mean, this yeah. is not only um, 
your bank statement borrowers that you're presenting to. But these are also, um, you're kind of filling up cups so you can give out. Everybody is going to be, uh, everybody in this presentation is going to be referring you borrowers that they have, clients that they have. So when they go out and they're with one of their clients and they're like, hey, I can't qualify for a loan because I'm self-employed, guess who they're going to call? They're going to call the person that presented to them and the person that reached out with their programs. So uh, this presentation here um, is for your realtors. It's designed specifically for them so that you can go ahead and present that realtor presentation. And if you guys don't feel comfortable presenting, contact your AE. I do it all the time. I love presenting in front of realtors. It's a great opportunity to give that knowledge to realtors to go ahead and spread that business for you. Um, essentially yeah, Javi, kind of, this is, yeah, yeah I, I, I get geeked up on this because this is the most powerful presentation you could do today because every realtor says, oh, I've got great service. I've got great rates. I use this title company. They, so 80% of you on this webinar today have not originated a bank statement loan. And that is almost 60 to 65% of our business. So can apply those numbers to realtors. I bet you you're close to 95% of them don't know these loans uh, exist. Well, maybe 90% because I think it's 9.5% of the self-employed borrowers we close are actually realtors. So you've got about 91, 90 and a half percent probably don't even know these loans admit and if you get you apply those numbers if if you get 12 realtors in a room i will guarantee you you will probably get one of their loans yeah so sorry Bobby, uh, I get that's, that's a great point i mean the, the realtors it's the gift that keeps on giving this presentation if you guys aren't getting in front of your realtors um it applies to uh, us as account executives if we're not telling you about your programs how are you going to know if you're not telling your realtors about your programs how are they going to know? You guys have all these programs available to you and you need to get the word out. And this marketing portal and these presentations are just one of the ways to do it. Yeah, Javi, you know, you brushed on this. Yes, Javi did mention that our account executives will do this presentation on your behalf. They don't say anything about Angel Oak. They don't go in there wearing a name tag. Uh, they just tell your referral source that we are just one of their investors that you yeah. as a loan officer, and I'll use John on this because he, he's, he's asked a lot of great questions and Nancy and, and, and all of you have asked great questions, but I would go in there on Nancy's behalf and just say, I am just Nan one of Nancy's investors, but everything goes through Nancy. And it's a powerful, powerful presentation. Sorry. Hi. I think it's also important to, uh, to point out that um, all the presentation and the other things that Javi's gonna show you, it's all customizable with with, with your logo, your photo, whatever information you want, it's all customizable, white labeled to, to, to the broker or the lenders. Yeah. As one as our one AE I work with, she says, Angel Look has really invested in your future. And all these, as Javi mentioned, these are free. They yeah. don't cost you just need to be an approved broker with Angel Look. So go ahead, Javi. Yeah. So um the next two sections kind of go hand in hand in the whiteboard and social media. So uh, whiteboard are quick one minute videos, um, just explaining our programs uh, down to the basics. It's top level stuff. You can share it um, on your social media so that borrowers see this video. And as they're watching like the bank statement one, you see they're kind of a little picture of it, it has a construction worker. When you, when you put that on social media, you might have a borrower that looks at that video and he's like, dang, I'm that construction worker. Uh, I'm that borrower, let me call this loan officer. And they're gonna call you because these simple videos, um, social media is the most powerful tool nowadays that you can use. Um, if you're going, if you're not using social media, I highly recommend it. And if you're like, I'm not on social media because I don't know what to post, well, we have that covered for you as well. So other than these videos, if you go um, back up to the social media section, um, we give you the words. Um, essentially, we give you the pictures and the words to post. All you have to do is copy paste. Um, you see, we target it toward realtors or borrowers. Um, depending who you want to reach out to, it's right there um, for you to copy, paste, and post. Um, and it's that simple. Like um, John said, there's no Angel Oak anywhere on that. This is your post. This is coming straight from you um, for all the borrowers know. They don't know that this exists, and it's you're the one reaching out with these programs. Yep. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, and then if we can go into the last section, the flyers, um, this is our, our number one uh, probably used um, product in our marketing portal. Um, our flyers are amazing. They're, they're top-notch flyers. Um, and you see here, we have it for all of our programs. And it's not just programs. It goes in depth to um, do's and don'ts. It talks about who are the common uh, bank statement borrowers. It goes towards investment properties. Um, and we even have them in Spanish. Um, we have uh, flyers in Spanish as well for anybody that's in the market where there's Spanish borrowers. Um, but you see these flyers, um, they're super customizable. Um, as you see here, you can add logos. Um, in this example here, you see for this loan officer, he customized it here with his logo on the top left. He has his headshot there, um, his contact information. And like I said, Angel Oak is nowhere to be found. These are your flyers. These are your programs for you to advertise. Um, and you see, you can customize it here completely, your name, your phone number, um, and even your disclosures. I, I always recommend you speak with your compliance department in your companies and make sure that you're putting the right disclosures out there as well as the equal housing lender or opportunity. Yeah, I, I mean, Javi, great job covering our marketing portal. I mean, if you can't get excited about you know, growing your business in this environment, which we all realize it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a take it to the streets environment right now. And Angel Oak has given you all these tools, you know, and sometimes you get a little frustrated because we talk about this, we get, you get really excited about it, but no one takes advantage of it. I'm telling you, if you get that realtor presentation or, you know, we have a, a account executive out West, he goes, how do you find these self employed Open your front door. They're all there. They're, when you run your errands either during the week or at night or on the weekends, every strip mall there's probably owned by a self-employed bar. Why not pull, pull out a self-employed bar or flyer? Uh, Les, anything else about marketing? Um, no, other than to really use these tools. I mean, they are fantastic tools. And going back to the presentation, I, I've done a few presentations and I love doing them. Uh, it, it, is, it really is impactful. And, and if you bring us on, you know, as kind of your wingman, um, it, it, it is, it really is powerful. And we love doing them. Uh, yeah. We can do them either, you know, depending on where your AE is, uh, they can either do it virtually or, or they can go in and ride along with you and do, and do it in person. So um, please reach out to your AE uh, about that. Uh, and you'll see we're very, very, willing to help and we actually really love doing them i know we're getting near the top of the hour i just want to remind everyone this is being recorded we will get uh the recording out to you before end of day tomorrow if we did not get to a lot of your great questions you know your account executive will reach out to you um and uh there is a uh, a survey at the end of this if, if you want to just please take it how what we could do better you know we're always look looking to get better at these Les, anything in closing that you want to share? Um, yeah, I just really want to emphasize the impact of going with the bank statement program. Um, how much more house your borrower will be able to buy? Um, I've always said, you know, business owners have big appetites. They work very hard for their money. They don't want to pay Uncle Sam. I get it. Um, but they want to enjoy the fruits of their labor. And when they go house shopping, they're going and they're shopping for big homes. Um, so you have an opportunity there to really get a higher ticket average. Um, and but the problem is the borrower when he brings you tax returns, yeah, you know he can only afford a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home. Doesn't make his spouse too happy because you know maybe she wants that seven hundred million dollar home. Well, yeah, you can only deliver and, and in this market, in this environment. You know, show you like, real flow. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Les. Sorry. No, no, that, that's what I just want to emphasize. Just really the the power of of uh, the purchasing power uh, that the bank saving program can give your borrower is tremendous. I mean, nine out of ninety nine out of out of hundred, you're going to get a lot more purchasing power going with bank statements versus their tax returns. Yeah, and and I'm going to ask answer one more question, Linda, and thank you very much, Linda. Once you fill in the information on these flyers it populates all the flyers that we have there so thank you for reminding me linda uh I, that's usually something we always cover we didn't so thank you linda yes fill it in once 
you know, it fills it, it populates them for all the flyers. And I think we have close to 30 on there now. So, um, Javi, anything else in closing? Um, yeah. Um, well, and to, to Linda's point, um, it also stays with your credentials. So once you fill it in once, it'll always be there. You don't have to keep going in and refilling it. It'll always be there um, for you to have easy access. Um, but in closing, what I did want to say is that, uh, kind of piggyback on Leslie, if you're not taking advantage of the bank statement program, you're missing out on money, plain out. Uh, um, it's just that simple. This is a huge program. It's underserved still. As long as it's been around, there's still a lot of borrowers that are underserved out there. Um, people aren't reaching out to them. Um, they still thinking that they can't qualify for the mortgage they want. So there's a lot renting still, and there's a lot in homes that they maybe they don't want. It's not their dream home that they could have qualified for. Um, but if nobody's reaching out to them, they're never going to know. So take advantage of us and use our marketing portal. Use your account executive. Um, your account executives are always available and they're um, one of the biggest tools um, that you can use in this market. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Javi. Thank you, Les. Thank you for taking the time out of your day. Again, this is being recorded. We will send this out to you before end of day. A uh, shameless plug here, May 4th, we're doing the second most popular program uh, that we do, and that's that debt service coverage ratio. A lot of people building wealth using, you know, investment properties. So uh, I, anyway, on behalf of everyone at Angel Oak, for those of you who have closed loans with us, thank you for your business. For those who have not, you know, please give us the opportunity to help you grow your business and, 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 and the, <laughs> And on behalf of everyone at Angelo, thank you for uh, being with us today. Have a great day. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you.